Okay, let's try this talking thing. We'll see how it goes. The purpose of this tutorial is to go over the basics of creating a pitch tracked synth voice from some other audio source. I'm using a guitar, but don't get hung up on that. Anything that creates pitch can be used with this method. I've used a kalimba, I've used a bass, I've used other synths, which is an interesting approach. But every one of them has a few basic things in common. So first, we have audio coming in. And then we need a pitch detector, so that the pitch detector can listen to the audio and tell us what note we're producing. You probably think, great, we need an oscillator. So we connect these all up and we go, well, let's just see what that sounds like. Sorry about that. But the reason that I demonstrate that is to point out that every note has two components. There's a pitch and there's a gate. The pitch tells us what note is being played. The gate tells us how long it's being played. So the easiest way to generate a gate from our audio is to use an envelope filter or an envelope follower. So we connect our input to our envelope follower and the envelope follower opens a VCA. Now this should be set to default when you put it in. That means that it's closed, which is no audio passes through it. When you connect the envelope follower, the envelope follower creates CV based on the amplitude of what you play. So if you play louder, it creates a, a larger CV value and it follows how long you play. If we look at the output, I'm playing a note, right? It goes and tracks that. So we connect our oscillator to our VCA. And now when I play a note, the CV from the envelope follower opens the VCA and allows the oscillator to pass through. You need this because the oscillator doesn't know when to produce noise. It just makes noise. That's what it does. That's its thing. It'll keep making noise from here to eternity. <coughs> the VCA tells it when, and the envelope follower tells it when to make noise. Now you may have seen this module down here and wondered, what is it? Well, this is a filter. This is a high pass filter and I've set it to 67 Hertz. And the reason that I've done that is that it helps filter out some of the low harmonics that can interfere with the pitch detector. Now the pitch detector isn't perfect, but this can help. Okay, so that's the basics. And this is pretty basic sound. But from those basic principles, we can create more complicated sounds. So this is the same basic setup. But what I've done here is I've put in three oscillators. If you look at them, they're tuned to different bass frequencies. This means when they receive pitch information, they'll change pitch at intervals. So here we have one that's tuned a fifth up. This is our bass frequency, A0. Uh, A0 just means that it's at its default position. And then A1. So this is an octave above. So it's a the note we play 
a fifth up and an octave up. And I've also added from our, our pitch detector, it goes into a slew limiter. And the slew limiter slows things down so that things can transition smooth, more smoothly. Then finally I've added a filter. And the filter just shapes the sound in this. It, it cuts off some high harmonics uh, and, and makes everything a little bit smoother. And the envelope follower also goes into a slew limiter. And the reason for this is we're, we're trying to create chords that swell and so the envelope will be slowed down, which will create a slower rise. So if we look at our envelope follower, this is the sound of the synth compared to the output of the slew limiter. Now the envelope follower, if you go into the options, has a rise and fall option. But I tend to like the output of a slew limiter better for this. So this is what it sounds like. This slew limiter is causing the, the notes to change over time. It doesn't just abruptly jump from note to note, they glide. This can help cover up some of the sins of the pitch detector, which is not always so accurate. And then our envelope follower, going into this other slew limiter, is giving us this rising sound in volume. Okay. We can do even more complex stuff. So this is a basic FM synthesizer. And the idea of FM is that one oscillator essentially affects the pitch of another one at a very high rate. I'm not an expert on FM synthesis. We have the same basic setup. So this goes into the, the filter that we're using to cut off some lows. That goes into the, the pitch detector. We're going to use another slew limiter, but it's pretty fast this time. We're just trying to, to make transitions happen a little bit more smoothly. We go into our envelope filter or envelope follower, I'm going to keep making that mistake. And that goes into another slew limiter. But this time, we're controlling this VCA, and this VCA is connected to a secondary oscillator. This is a modulator oscillator. What's happening here is this is pitched up one-fifth above our root. This is A0. This is E1, and it goes into the VCA, and then the VCA goes into the oscillator's FM input. And this is essentially creating a, an envelope so that there's a change over time as this is played. So the, the envelope follower goes in here, gets slowed down, and creates an, an envelope, a, a more gradual envelope, it's not that gradual because it's only one second. And that helps us change this sound over time, making it more dynamic. The envelope follower is going into the VCA, which is connected to our oscillator. And then the VCA is going into a low pass filter. But this time, unlike with the chord synth, the envelope follower is being used to modulate the frequency of the the synth voice and there's some resonance added on 
and it sounds a little like this. And I can't remember how that riff resolves. I've been trying to remember it in my head all morning. Uh, but <clears throat> essentially, you know, what's happening is that, that we're creating a, a more dynamic... sound using the same basic principles. We've got our audio going into a pitch detector and into an envelope follower. And then once we have those, we can do all sorts of things with, with this. You know, these are, are pretty simple uh, examples. You can add effects. You can use ADSRs to further shape how things sound. You can use lots of oscillators doing lots of things to one another. FM can get a lot more complicated than this. Uh, and yeah, the sky is pretty much the limit plus the CPU capacity of Zoya. So sorry for the talking. Uh, if you have any questions about this, please post a comment. I'll, I'll try to respond. Because, uh, yeah, I, I'm sure I, I glossed over a couple of things pretty quickly here. But that's the, the basic idea. Audio goes into a pitch detector to, to get our note. And it goes into an envelope follower to generate a gate. Um, and then oscillators, filters, you name it. You can do all sorts of other things to uh, audio once it gets in. Another note is... <laughs> The pitch detector is not perfect. Uh, you can improve things a little bit if you use uh, solid, you know, uh, muting and, and that sort of thing. It, it's it's not perfect. Um, but you can still create some pretty cool sounds using it. All right.